Topping our news this morning, New York's Attorney General has resigned following accusations of physical abuse from four women. The case against Eric Schneiderman was detailed in the New Yorker magazine. CBS's John Schumo takes a look at Schneiderman's professional career in which he positioned himself as an advocate for the Me Too movement. Very good Eric Schneiderman is denying allegations from four women who claim the New York Attorney General repeatedly hit and choked them, usually after he consumed large amounts of alcohol. Two of the women who were romantically involved with Schneiderman have publicly identified themselves and say he threatened to kill them if they left him. Neither filed any police complaints but say they sought out medical attention. The accusations published by The New Yorker were followed by calls for Schneiderman to resign, and three hours later, he did, issuing this statement. In the last several hours, serious allegations, which I strongly contest, have been made against me. While these allegations are unrelated to my professional conduct or the operations of the office, they will effectively prevent me from leading the office's work at this critical time. During his nearly eight years as New York's highest ranking law enforcement officer, Schneiderman has filed suit to protect immigrants brought to the U.S. as children. In February, his office sued the Weinstein Company, demanding greater compensation for alleged victims of disgraced movie mogul Harvey Weinstein. Sometimes they were targets themselves. If they refused, they were threatened with insults. Uh, their careers were threatened. They were threatened with physical intimidation and violence. New York's Governor Andrew Cuomo has called for an investigation. John Schumo, CBS News, New York. One of the accusers, Michelle Manning Barish, wrote on Twitter that she spoke up, quote, for my daughter and for all women. I could not remain silent and encourage other women to be brave for me. I could not. Also new this morning, President Trump is set to make an announcement today about the Iran nuclear deal. On Monday, British Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson met with Secretary of State Mike Pompeo at the White House to urge the U.S. to remain part of the deal. The president, who has signaled he wants out has until May 12th to make a decision. And Hawaii's Kilauea volcano continues to spew lava and toxic gases on the Big Island. The eruption has already consumed dozens of homes and other buildings. County officials allowed some evacuated residents back into their homes to pick up essentials yesterday. Closer to home, as the Billings Police Department's budget comes up for review, Chief Rich St. John presented the department's upcoming fiscal year budget, which calls for a $726,000 increase. During Monday night's City Council meeting, he said personnel is the largest cost increase in the police budget at almost $600,000. That includes full staffing of 153 officers and pay increases. Some of the challenges the department faces include sustainable funding, increase Increased demand for service, new officer recruitment, and the future of the city's evidence facility. Last year alone, city police responded to more than 94,600 calls for service. City Council could decide to go to the voters for financial support. We have been successful in the past going to the voters for all those issues. And I think we could again if we could make a good case for it. Meanwhile, the current Billings Fire Department budget will see a $400,000 decrease, which is about 2%. But Chief Bill Rash would like to add a second assistant fire chief and a 911 shift, shift supervisor. The new fiscal year begins on July 1st. Now we go to the Yellowstone County Courthouse where a cleanup is underway after the building received some flood damage. The Courthouse Superintendent of Facilities, Greg Erpenbach, tells us a faucet was left running in jo Judge Rod Seuss's chambers on the fifth floor over the weekend. And by Monday morning, there was an inch of standing water in his chambers, his courtroom, and across the hall. Water also leaked down a floor, getting into the records room of the clerk and recorder's office. It saturated nearly a dozen ceiling tiles and soaked carpets and seat cushions. City clerk and recorder Jeff Martin says they dodged a bullet. They immediately brought in a restoration company, got that dried up. I think it's airing out uh, right now. And just like our office, they got the fans going up there. These records are vital to the uh, real estate and banking community, and, and it would be devastating if we lost any of our records. So, yeah. It's a lucky day for Yellowstone County. 
Erpenbach says the cleanup should be complete within a couple of days. Well, you too may be taking a trip to the county courthouse if you're not yet registered to vote in the June primary election. Voters can still register, but must do so in person at the county elections office. Also on tap today, a special election in Lockwood where voters will be asked to fund a $50 million bond issue to build a new high school. Meanwhile, of the five voter initiatives to potentially make it on the 2018 ballot, just one has some serious money behind it. That measure, Initiative 185, would raise cigarette taxes by $2 a pack in Montana and extend the state's Medicaid expansion program beyond next year. Its supporters, led by Montana hospitals, have already raised or spent more than half a million dollars on the effort. Other big supporters include the American Cancer Society, AARP, and two Montana-based labor unions. Medicaid expansion now covers about 94,000 low-income adults in Montana and pays hundreds of millions of dollars in health care bills across the state. Supporters have until June 22nd to collect more than 25,000 signatures of registered voters to qualify the measure for the ballot. Continuing our coverage, the woman killed in a rollover crash near Crow Agency this weekend has been identified. 33-year-old Felicia Dawes of Crow Agency died in the accident that also left two other women injured. Authorities say the driver lost control of the vehicle on a curve, then rolled into a stream bed. We're told Dawes was not wearing a seatbelt. In consumer news, more than 4 million people visited Yellowstone National Park in 2017. During their time there, those visitors spent nearly a half billion dollars in communities around the park, spending that supports more than 7,300 jobs in those communities. Here's the breakdown from a 2017 survey compiled by the National Park Service. Park visitors spent 33% of their money on lodging or camping, 27.5% on food and beverages, and 12% on gas. Gasoline. Park officials say Yellowstone's economic impact is directly tied to the preservation of the park's wildlife and scenery. And one last story before we take a break. There are images that inspire, educate, and sometimes just make us say wow. Over the years, NASA has given us spectacular photos and renderings that reveal a colorful and mysterious universe. Now, CBS's Chris Martinez introduces us to two of the artists behind some of the most iconic space art in the galaxy. In a small, bright office, working side by side, let's see. Uh, Robert Hurt and Tim Pyle bring the universe to life. What we're doing does have real science underlying it. Robert is an astrophysicist turned artist. Tim, once a Hollywood animator, is now a planet illustrator. Together, they produce some of NASA's most popular images, from renderings of how planets light years away could look, to actual photos of stars and galaxies captured by NASA's powerful telescopes. And this is sort of how it comes to me. And then I Many of those know, images have a dark, to grainy to start, but color and light reveal an astonishing glimpse of how the deepest regions of space might appear to the human eye. What I'm trying to do is show people sort of the, the broader colors that the universe has to offer. It's a delicate blend of imagination and data. The artists meet with NASA scientists over many drafts to ensure a planet or galaxy's look lines up with the research to make each one as accurate as possible. I love the challenge. It's kind of like a puzzle to me of trying to create something that looks really cool within the restrictions that were given by the scientists. It can take days, even weeks, to produce just a single image. The dazzling final results, enough to keep us all dreaming of the final frontier for years to come. Chris Martinez, CBS News, Pasadena, California. And the artists say they have to be especially careful when it comes to illustrations of other planets to avoid colors many of us would associate with Earth properties such as blue for water.